Hey everyone, I'm Robin VR, and welcome to another episode of VR Review, my weekly virtual news wrap-up. This program is made possible by generous contributions by viewers like you. Thank you. Google introduced a ton of new hardware and technology at their Made by Google event this week, including the Daydream View VR headset. The Daydream View is made of soft materials and fabric and is very lightweight. The case doesn't have any active components, so you don't have to plug the phone in. There are no focus or IPD adjustments, but they are soft and roomy enough to accommodate glasses comfortably. Two capacitive buttons on the case touch the phone screen and are used to give perfect alignment of the VR split screen, even if you don't put the phone in perfectly. A passive NFC tag lets the phone know when it's placed into the case so that it enters daydream mode automatically. The case has a grooved area to store the daydream controller when not in use. The controller has a clickable touchpad, two buttons, a volume control, and internal sensors that enable a limited level of motion control. Currently Daydream only works with the new Google Pixel phone, but more manufacturers will be releasing Daydream compatible phones soon. Google Daydream comes in three colors, slate, snow, or crimson, and is available for pre-order now. Free for a limited time with purchase of a Pixel phone, or for $79 after, and is expected to start shipping in November. Lots of new information coming out of the Oculus Connect 3 keynote this week. Everyone got their first look at the final version of the long-awaited Oculus Touch motion controllers. You can pre-order a pair of controllers that include a tracking camera on October 10th for $199, with shipping starting on December 6th. The controller's grips and buttons are able to more or less simulate thumb, index finger, and the rest of your fingers, letting you pick up and hold objects, as well as point and give a thumbs up. There were some complaints of fatigue having to constantly hold down the trigger to hold an object, and some issues aiming in games that required it, but they were otherwise positively received. Room scale VR is now possible with the Oculus Rift, but it requires a minimum of three cameras. So within two include with the Vive Touch setup, you'll need to pay an additional $79 for a third camera. This drives up the price of an Oculus room scale system to $877, or about 10% more than the HTC Vive. There wasn't any mention of maximum play space, but with the Oculus cable about 3 feet shorter than the Vive, and the limited range of the cameras, it'll be far smaller than the 15 foot by 15 foot Vive play space. Oculus also announced a new version of its asynchronous time warp feature that creates a morphed image when it lacks the capacity to generate a brand new image. This new feature is known as asynchronous space warp. It works a little like the HTC Vive version of Time Warp, where the overall frame rate is dropped from 90 to 45 frames per second, and every other frame is a generated more frame, keeping up an apparent 90 frames per second. The difference with asynchronous space warp is the positional data, along with rotational data, is used to generate a more accurate warp frame. The other upshot is this mode is as a lower hardware requirement, dropping the price of an Oculus compatible computer to around $500. Other products featured include Oculus earbuds, touch-enabled games like Robo Recall, Oculus Ready laptops, and a VR web browser. Finally, Oculus showed us its vision for the future of virtual reality. The first was a live demo of its vision of social VR, including cartoonish avatars with spatial expressions, able to teleport to different 360 environments, and do things like video chat with the real world. The second was a standalone VR headset codenamed Santa Cruz, with an inside-out head tracking enabled by small cameras on the headset. Unlike the social VR demo that was largely staged, Oculus has a working prototype of Santa Cruz and gave a limited demonstrations in a secret room at Oculus Connect. Oculus made it very clear that these were both concepts at this point and to not expect to see either of these technologies as consumer products anytime soon. If you like this video and feel it's helped you keep up with these technologies, please consider supporting what I do with any of these options. If you can't afford to make a financial contribution, please subscribe and share the video with your friends on social media. It really helps. Thank you.